Oh, hi, hi. Welcome to Hollywood Party. I'm Lauren. I want to share with you some extra little goodies that I just couldn't cram into my podcast every week. And I feel like, why waste them? I can share them with everybody. So grab a drink and join the party. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Okay, today, I guess this is kind of an after party, right? Because it's not the real party. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about Desi Arnaz and all the little goodies I found out about him that I couldn't share. He had a really good friend in New York called Polly Adler. She was a Russian Jewish madam of a whorehouse. And she became so big because she was under the protection of Lucky Luciano, who was like a big time mobster, like big, big. If you watch Boardwalk Empire, he's in that, well, he's dead, but his characters in that. So because she's under the protection of the mob, there's the Supreme Court judge who frequents her establishment. His name is Joseph Crater, and he goes missing. And to this day, he has never been found. This is like, I think in the 30s. I know there's been a novel written about it, but like, where is he? What did she do with him? Well, it's not her. Like, you know, Lucky Luciano or one of his henchmen came in and like took care of it. So she's definitely involved in some scandaloso. A little less scandalous, after she was 50 years old, she went back to college and then she wrote a book. That was a bestseller. It's called A House Is Not A Home. Of course, it was turned into a movie and Shelley Winters played her, which it works because Polly Adler, I mean, Shelley Winters was pretty, but Polly Adler says Desi she had the voice of William Frawley, Fred Mertz. So yet again, I'm gonna go back to Saturday Night Live. Were they just doing too much coke to like read his book? It's not that long. It's like 200 something pages, maybe 300 pages. They would not have had to do any work that week. They could have just opened it up and been like, boom, sketch number one, him teaching people uh, how to read. That's hysterical. Chapter number 22, oh, a whorehouse madam who sounds like Fred Mertz. That's, that writes itself. What is wrong with these people? Come on, 70s SNL, get it together. Al Capone Jr., also known as Sonny, went to school with Desi Arnaz. They went to high school together in Miami. They were pretty good friends and they both run the basketball team together. So when Desi goes and buys the rights to the Untouchables, which is about Al Capone, who Desi knew, but he was like, Mm, you know, syphilis, so he's not like super scary anymore. He's been out of jail, like his brain is basically cheese. Doesn't matter, Sonny's pissed. He calls up Desi and he's like, why did it have to be you? Why did you have to buy the rights to this book? Like you knew my dad, you know me, we were friends. And Desi says, hey man, like if it wasn't me, it would be somebody else. So after the mob threatens Desi, Frank Sinatra threatens Desi, and then he and Sonny Jr. have a little kerfuffle about this, possibly lawyers involved, possibly settled out of court, I'm not quite sure, but I think probably. Um, the Untouchables turns kind of like Law and Order, where it's like, based on true events, they make up their own mobsters because they don't want to get in trouble anymore. So that's kind of how that all shook out. One interesting incident after Lucy and Desi were divorced, Desi, he retired to Del Mar and he's having dinner one night, daughter Lucy's visiting him and he's having a few drinks as Desi does because that's his jam. Out on the beach are a bunch of hippies and they're having a good time and Desi's like, God damn it. Like these kids need to like be quiet. So he goes out there, drink in hand, a gun in hand and is like, you know, shut up, be quiet, and possibly popped off a few rounds. Cops are called, he's taken away. Lucy Jr., basically, calls Mama Lucy and is like, hey, dad got arrested because he was like, oh, get off my lawn, old man, on these kids. So she sends down someone from LA down to Del Mar to leave blanks, like blank bullets, on the beach just in case this has to go like to trial or whatever. It never did. But it's just interesting, like, they were divorced, but they were still super, super close and intertwined and looked out for each other. So, uh, it's cute, but weird. And one last little thing, Desi Arnaz, when he was promoting this book, he talked about how he was a teacher at this little college in San Diego. 
oh my god, how cool would that have been to have Desi Arnaz be your teacher? I mean, he could teach you everything about TV or music or both. I don't know. Like, I don't think these kids actually appreciated it because Lucy, she also taught. She taught, like, there's a film of her teaching at UCLA. I'll link it down below. And it's, she's very good. She is very, very good. I think she really missed her calling. And Desi, there's no footage of him, but he's a smart guy. Even if he, you know, did like to knock back a lot of drinks, he could still, like, teach kids something about TV. So, what an interesting teacher he would have been. What for it? Yeah? Sorry. So one way for our little party to get bigger is to like and subscribe below. One of the best things about the old Hollywood community is finding other people who you can just nerd out with about old movies. I know it seems like they're few and far between, but if you like and subscribe, you will, we will be able to find each other a lot better. So comment below and tell me what's your favorite I Love Lucy episode. You don't have to have just one. I know it's very hard. So tell me which ones are your favorite. And let me know below if you were gonna take a class taught by Desi Arnaz, would you rather it be music or TV? Let me know below and I'll see you next time. Bye.